Hello and welcome back. Uh, today's video shows will teach how to create file shares and then map drives to the shares uh, file shares that have that have been created. Okay, to create a file share which is uh, shareable with other people. Uh, it's done in the following way. So let's say we create a folder. Um, we can just call it share. Uh, so we can choose which location it's going to go into first. So the actual location might be in data, and then we call it share. And uh, once the once you have a folder that can be that you want to share out, there could be multiple folders in it. Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, as you share, if you share a folder at the level, that's where it be shared from, and all the other shares uh, folders will be vis viewable and visible, depending on permissions, which we will go through. So first, to create the share, you right-click, and so right-click and go into properties and click on sharing tab then click on share now at this level um, you can either create the share with the uh, with everyone with the everyone group so that everyone's got access to it and then then it can be still be controlled via the uh, ACLs and file permissions or you can actually create it, uh, control it at this level as well for added security um, so you can add individuals for example this dev admin accounts added and uh, if you had multiple other uh, users that you could add those in and you can say what what kind of access you want to give them read write so if they, if they only have read access they won't be able to delete files so if you want but they, but they won't be able to modify files either so it's a it's a bit of a catch there so essentially everybody needs to have read write access if they as long as they need to create files or folders and write to the files then it has to be read write access so this what we're doing is creating the basic share um, at this level and if we had other users we can add them or if we want to add everyone we can add the everyone group and we can give everyone read write read write access Once you've added the users who who need to have access to the share, then you simply click on share. Once that's done, click done, and that is pretty much it. Now the share is the, is this. It'll be the server name backslash whatever the name of the share is. In this case, we call the share share, so it becomes this. Now if you take this path, server name, which is dev01 backslash share and you can actually go to file explorer and if I put the path there it will actually open up at the moment it's empty but it actually opens up at that level um, we also need to add permissions to the folder um, at the folder level uh, this is done by again right clicking instead of sharing you go into security and you can say who's got access to it. So everyone's got full control, uh, and uh, the account that I'm logged in with, which is dev admin, has got full control. So, for example, if we don't want to give admin full control, we can give everyone read write access but take away full control. What that does is for the full control, if we give them modify access, they can do everything. The full control uh, gives them access to create, add other people's to the share which we don't want them to be able to do necessarily. You want that to be controlled. Uh, but however, I'll do another video on that to show file permissions. Uh, and uh, once the once the share is created, uh, well, let's create a temporary folder in it. Let's call it TEMP. Now, to map the drive uh, to this folder. Now, th th even though we created the share on the, on the, on the, on the machine, this machine you can actually access this this server 
and map the drive from any other machine, which is the idea to map map drives to any, from any other machine. So let's say you are on your Windows workstation, uh, like Windows 10 or Windows 7. It's done in the pretty much in the same way. If you're on if if you're on your Windows uh, machine, you would right click on this computer and choose map network drive. Once this dialog box opens, you would select what drive letter you want to map the share to. So for example, you might want to map it to T or drive S because we've called it share. That's what we'll do. We'll drive map it to drive S because we called it share. But you, you know, you might want to map it to a specific drive letter and you're free to do that. If a drive letter is in use, uh, then it will appear here as what it's mapped to. So obviously you can't map to that because it's already in use. So uh, I, said, I said we were going to use S. Uh, folder. So here we're going to use, we're going to give the path. I mean, that's it says folder, but that's actually incorrect. Uh, we want actually want to specify the, the path like this server name share name so the server name is dev actually we can look up the server here what the server name is but you need to get that from your IT department or you need to look at whatever your server name is where you've created this share if this if the share is being created on a Windows workstation that is also fine and you still be able to map, map a drive to it um, dev zero one. So it's dev zero one backslash backslash share. Because we've got permissions al already, because the the file permissions are already assigned, you can actually map a drive uh, as long as it was Active Directory is uh, uh, servers there, and you've used that, you've given permissions for an Active Directory account, you can just map the share. If you wanted to map map a drive which was two workstations which were which were not on in a domain you can still map the drive but in this instance you would uh, create an account on the local machine and uh, choose this method to connect connect using different credentials and then it will tell you uh, how to connect but I will come back to that another time right now we all we want to do is map a drive so we choose reconnect at login. Now the reconnect at login is if we don't use that, the, sh the share will map, but once you reboot your machine or log out, the share will not be there anymore. And that is because uh, the share is uh, not, not uh, the, this checkbox is not connect, uh, not, not checked. Reconnect at sign in. This will allow Make sure that when once you reboot the machine or log off, it will still remain connected in your account. So we choose finish, and the drive gets mapped, and the temp folder is there. So we are now on S drive. You can see the S drive share folder mapped onto your machine. Now the folder size will be exactly as as whatever the share f sh as the as the folder that the share is on. So in this case, because we mapped it to this folder, it will be identical. But had this been on the server, these settings would be showing whatever's on the server. So with this, this share mapped, you can actually just click on S drive or you can just say click S drive and you can get to it. And that is pretty much it uh, to map a uh, share. We can actually map it from a, a command line as well. And I will show you how to do that as well. So I will delete the share. Let's disconnect this. The, the share and now the share is gone we can actually map it from a command line as well we just open up uh, Windows command so here we use the command net use and we specify what drive letter we want to map it to so we want to map it to drive s And then we give the path. So it'll be slash slash 
dev01 backslash share and we put if we want to make it again this will map the drive but once you log off it will be gone and the share will be it will not be there because it's not persistent we, what we need to do is make sure it's pers persistent so we do forward slash persistent now this will map the drive as it does in the in the in the command com in the in the dialog box from the command line so you can actually use a script to map a drive uh, as well so if you press enter here uh, it didn't like something uh, which we will look up right now look at the command which I was going to show anyway uh, so if we, uh, these are the options that are available to map a drive um, I think it's a slash persistent I think it's just in these oh right okay so what we need is slash persistent yes or no so we're going to say yes persistent and it becomes yes so that will then map the drive so let me go through the command again net use drive letter so that's the command net use net space use then space you give the the drive letter that you want to map to please ensure that you know it's free by checking that it's free otherwise you'll just give an error then space the path you want to map to which is the share itself which is dev01 in this case uh, backslash share and if you want to make it persistent you put forward slash persistent colon yes so now if I press enter on this this will map the drive the command completed successfully now we had deleted the command from the from the thing and you can see this appeared again you can also delete from command line the share by choosing uh, net use s colon forward slash delete and you will see it see it appear delete from here you'll see it delete from there I uh, see it's disappeared from there and we can map it again to make it appear from the command line and you'll see it appear there so that's how to do it in the command line and that's how to map uh, shares I will do another tutorial if you want to, to uh, connect if you want to map drives and, and f do file shares across workstations which are not on a domain uh, but that'll be uh, a separate video I'll do that on thank you very much for watching